Hi, my name is Nate Lucas, and I'm your host for the Kentucky Colonel News Podcast, the University of Kentucky's very own student-led, award-winning newspaper. This episode, I'll be covering the protesters that have been a mainstay of the first few weeks on Kentucky's campus. I'm joined today by the Colonel's TikTok manager, Bryce Toll. A quick disclaimer, the opinions expressed on this podcast are the speaker's own and do not reflect the opinions held by the Kentucky Colonel. All right, let's go. All right, Bryce, how are you doing today? Doing good, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, So first, today we're going to start off with a new segment called Scoops Out of the Litter, where I tell our listeners all they need to know about uh, the national news. So starting off, we have Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell appears to freeze up again, this time at a Kentucky event, uh, AP News reports. So what do you think about that, Bryce? Uh, I don't think that Mitch McConnell should go for a re-election. I don't think he should run again. Um, he froze for like 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, Mitch is 81 years old. This is the second time this is happening, I think, in about a, a month span. Uh, it hasn't been a long time since the last episode, so it's it's really depressing to see that for Mitch. Yeah, it was just about a month ago. Yeah, so I feel like this also raises the question about term limits for Congress and age limits on Congress as well. On the other side of... Uh, the party on the, in the Democratic Party, you have Diane Feinstein, who remains in the Senate, uh, in the Senate to block the Republican Party from appointing someone to her place in the Judiciary Committee, which I'm, I think that's a it's an honorable thing for her to do. But she's in no position to serve as well. I mean, she's very literally mute uh, whenever they they have a, a convening or whatever they call that. Yeah, um, is Ryan? Who is the her Mitch's um Mitch's wife? This woman the Oh her yeah, the woman who yeah, like his press secretary or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I watched the video is is depressing to see her yeah. her do that. She knew she knew what was going on, so that makes me think that it's a behind the scenes issue as well. Yeah, I, I would I mean he's definitely suffering some from some mental disorder or mm-hmm. you know, like old age it's, it's I mean nothing against him, like I get it. Um but I don't think that America should want somebody in office like this that yeah. is having is struggling to just speak. Like he, I, I'm trying to remember the question that was asked. It was something like, it was about you, about reelection. Yeah, about yeah, reelection was, as well. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, and then just froze for that long, and then she's like, "We're gonna need a minute." And like, what are you gonna do? Like, yeah. you can't. He. The, yeah, he's having gonna, a seizure. Yeah, like yeah. everybody's still filming. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for him to recover from that. Uh, All right. Our next story is Justice Clarence Thomas uh, reports that he took three trips on Republican donors plane last year, that Republican donor being Harlan Crow. Uh, So, I mean, last year alone, that's that's pretty crazy that he's going on a trip with basically somebody that his is his friend on three trips. I mean, how many trips do you go on with your friends every year? You know? like excursions vaca- these this is like a vacation you know it's it's not just they're going camping out in the woods or something or they're having a good night somewhere that's not their home it's they're going on vacation yeah you know yeah so uh i i, I think that there's a lot more trips that we probably don't know about that uh he could that could be unearthed in the future um and also i saw in the article as well this was from ap news that Harlan Crow actually paid for justice, the justice's child to to go to private school, which I thought was so insane. I I know that he's done a lot for the justice, such as like paying for statues on uh, college campuses. Uh, pay, I don't know if he's paid for campaigns at all, but you know he's just kind of being he's he's being extra. Um, but like literally basically raising his child, like he's sending his child to school. I thought that was pretty, that was pretty insane, especially for somebody who's supposed to be uh, the fairest, most truthful person in all of America. So, yeah. Uh, can't really speak on that too much, if I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. You don't know too much about the story. Uh, n- none entirely. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bad stuff for sure. It, it made uh. I think that they're having new revisions on how justices are being checked to make sure that they're they're unbiased uh, and everything like that. So, 
Uh, and then our third and final story is just an update on Trump's case. He's pleading not guilty in the Georgia election subversion case, and he says that he'll skip next week's hearing. I thought that was crazy. I I can't. I don't. I don't know how somebody can just say that they're going to skip a hearing. Yeah. Um, at, uh, like obviously he, he was the president, but that doesn't hold you to any higher. You're not above the law. Um, I'm not. You know I've covered hearings, but I don't know how it works when you're the one in the hearing like yeah the, the, it's about you so in my opinion i don't think that that should be allowed <laughs> honestly <laughs> i i don't understand why he can just be like yeah i'm just not gonna go yeah um and it's, obviously he's gonna like he did plead not guilty yeah um he's gonna fight that case uh you know but it's it's pretty wild man um i don't know I'm really curious to see where it goes. To be honest with you, um, yeah. How long? How long do you think the entirety of like the trial will go? Um, I'm not sure. I feel like since it's re- a Rico, um, <laughs> bro, got, yeah, he got a Rico Smith case. Thunder, bro, yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah, if our listeners don't know, he got arrested in Fulton County, Georgia, and so that's um. The same county where rappers Playboy Cardi and Young Thug uh, and Gunna also got arrested. So it's just funny to see him and with the release of it's his mugshot. Funny. It's super funny to see him and the mugshots of other rappers. Yeah. Um, but anyways, what you were saying about his rights and stuff or no. What you were saying about why you don't think he showed up, it's like I, I read the article just a little bit, and he said it's like his right to do it. So it's some law somewhere where you don't have to show up for it. I think it's just an arraignment. Okay. And if if I'm right, I don't know too much about um, a case and stuff like that in legal proceedings. But I think that just means that they're naming all the charges on him. So I think he already kind of knows what the charges are. Right. So he doesn't really need to be there. Yeah. So I mean, a guy like Trump, he's not going to be there if he if he doesn't have to be. So right. Um, another interesting tidbit I found out about how or when he was indicted, uh, he he raised seven point one million dollars yeah. for his campaign in jail. Yeah, quite uh, insane. So first of all, he's the first president to have a mugshot, mm-hmm. right? And the first to raise money for his campaign in jail, and let alone and outside of that that was millions of dollars 7.1 million dollars yeah uh, no people we will probably never see that money in our life yeah and he made it in less in a, in around a day's period in jail yeah so is that just do you know if that was just people who just donated to his campaign like just normal people like us or do you know if that was like uh republican donors you know, you know? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it, it, this report in AP says uh, he raised 7.1 Thursday after booking Fulton County uh, due to the overturning of the election. Um, spokeswoman Steve or spokesman Stephen Chung said that Friday alone the campaign brought in 4.18 million, its yeah. highest wow. grossing day to date, um, and that's just Friday alone. Uh, it goes on to say how uh, the Hall underscores how Trump's legal woes have been fundraising. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a big issue or a big concern about his legal case was that uh, he was going to run out of money eventually. So I think I think he's pretty good with $7.1 million. I'm sure that that made his day and made him happy that he could keep paying his lawyers and hopefully they can keep out of, him out of jail long enough so he can get yeah. reelected and pardon himself. Yeah, he's probably... I think that's his plan. He, he might still... I mean, I don't think Trump's in debt by yeah. any means, but I think he. it's not like a net positive obviously first yeah. of all he's in jail Se- well he was second of all um they had they spent tens of millions just defending his claims yeah um for his campaign so th- you know that number is isn't going to add up like him being in jail isn't going to make him more money than than them spending the money to defend his claims on not going yeah um so he's losing money mm-hmm. yeah he's losing a lot of money um that that kind of made me think about you saying that it was his highest grossing day too. I'm guessing that it included big donors that he's probably used to. And they were like, Hey, I see you're in jail, buddy. Like here's, <laughs> here's a good pick me up. Yeah. You know, like you, you owe me a beer next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm interested to know like who donated, uh, 
Yeah, I wish it was like a, a GoFundMe and you could see all the names of everybody, but <laughs> I'm sure it's not right? like that. Yeah. Um. But anyways, let's let's get to uh, uh, free speech on campus. You know, talking about the TikTok, how it's been going on uh, at the start of school, and really some of your most popular videos have come from these. Pr- I I call them protesters because I don't really have another word for it. And I don't want to call them anything derogatory because, I mean, they have the right to be here and everything. Um, And I don't mean to offend, but it's really just people that are are being, frankly, crazy. And they're yelling at students. uh, They're telling them what are claimed, what what usually are said to be conspiracy theories. Um, And... Some people would say that they're disrupting campus life. So I'm just I'm just interested to, uh, you know, talk to you and hear about some of the student opinions on these guys that have been showing up to campus. Yeah, um, it's definitely interesting. So I'll start with talking about like the moon landing guy. Um, yeah, his name is Pete. In the comment, th- that's our most commented video. It's not our most like viewed video. Uh, there's like over 200 comments on it, and I've read all those. And one of the comments that stuck out to me was. This person said, you know, I know him. Uh, I, you know, we, we live in the same town. And then she said, this is crap. So I don't know if she was referring to the video or if she was referring to what he's talking about. But what I'll say is that, so Pete is a denier of the moon landing um, and also a flat earther. Uh, and with him denying the moon landing, he also doesn't even believe that the moon is real. Um, he thinks it's a projection. He doesn't believe Mars is real either. Uh, so in my uh, humble opinion, I think that's crap. Uh, I think space is real. I think yeah. <laughs> different planets exist. I think I see the moon every night. I don't think it's just a projection. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I won't hinder all his claims just because, you know, he has the right to think what he wants. And, like, as a journalist, you know, we can go on and on and on about how conspiracy theories have led to truthful ac- accusations that have like led s- people to, yeah, to sure. accomplish things so you know m- maybe he's got a point with something i don't agree I d- with m- mainly all of it but he has his right to to talk about what he wants to and i don't think he's really bothering anybody i did see a few times that he would be like oh nice nails girl or i yeah. like that dress and he would only make remarks to girls and you know we we probably understand why he's doing that yeah um but yeah i mean he totally has his right to talk it's not anything like hateful it's just like conspiracy wise but the people that showed up recently and they were there yesterday too uh right yeah Yeah. they were here two days in a row are they they Mm -hmm. weren't here today right no i don't believe so yeah so some people would call those people religious extremists okay I would go on a limb and, and also say that, okay, because yeah. they are extreme, and I don't know what else that I would classify that under. They're protesting religion, and what they're doing is, in my opinion, disrespectful to a lot of people on campus. Uh, they're making claims that, you know, any ter- any form of homosexuality, you're going to go to hell. If you're a feminist, you're going to go to hell. If you're any other religion, you're going to go to hell. You're going to be a demon. He, I, you know, forty minutes of interview footage that I have that's going to need to be like all edited and like me being there seeing how what people's reactions were uh you know 90% of or what I would say maybe 90% of students that heard that or were on campus disagree with what they're saying a few students did agree uh which that's cool you know they they have the right to agree and disagree and they have their own opinions um <laughs> <laughs> this one interview I got, this kid, this student said that uh, he agrees with what they're saying, but their ideology and the theology of what they're speaking about is, quote, a little sus. Yeah. So let me just paint a little picture for our listeners right here. So these two guys have uh, come on our campus the past uh, two days on Tuesday and Wednesday. So that's uh, August 30th and August 29th. And they've stood uh, right behind uh, the Gatton Student Center on UK's campus. They're pretty close to Patterson Office Tower and Whitehall. 
And so what these guys have been doing is, uh, I believe they have a megaphone and uh, they have a big sign uh, that's super tall. Uh, and then it kind of has this list of people who are going to go to hell if, if they don't repent. And that includes, like Bryce said, homosexuals, uh, feminists. Uh, one that's my favorite is lukewarm hypocrites because, I mean, <laughs> what does that even mean, really? Yeah, it also said liars, adulterers. Yeah. Um, a list of it also said pot smokers on there yeah which i found funny oh porn watchers right yeah um so it's just like you're gonna see this sign and be like and you're maybe you don't even hear it maybe you have your headphones in you just don't even see the crowd of people at all but you see this sign that's like 15 feet tall in the air yeah. you just see it and it's, it's like very large yeah you're mm -hmm. gonna go to hell and you're like what and then you start reading and it's just pretty gnarly things uh yeah, and like the places you were listing is like that's around our central campus. That's like directly. Yeah, where the foot traffic between switching classes is really, really heavy right there. Exactly, there, yeah. that's the place where most people, if they're if they're gonna try to talk to you, uh, whether they're trying to sell a religion to you or they're trying to uh, teach you about the the moon landing was fake, they're gonna be at that spot on campus where the most people can see them. Yeah. And so, like, with that, you know, if you're going to be there and you're going to talk to the public, you need to be weary of what you're going to say. And I caught some pretty extreme anti-Semitic language from the leader of this group uh, that I'm not going to say. Yeah. Um, but it was it was pretty harsh. And, you know, we're I'm also choosing not to use that in the TikTok. Uh, and, you know, in regards to it, them being Christian religious extremists, what I would call them, um, anti-Semitism can play a part in that, but I don't think that it is a major part in this story uh, due to the fact that there were an abundance of students who would who were standing for LGBTQIA yeah. plus right. Yeah, the, the story that comes out of this for journalists, I think, uh, and whenever you have a situation like this, I think it's the un the, the unity of students to be able to you know, cast these guys out and say that, you know, it's not okay and that all people are welcome at our campus because obviously when you go to an institution, you want everybody to, you want everybody to feel welcome. You don't want people to feel like they're they're not wanted there. Um, and even uh, but but yeah, you, you just want everybody to feel welcome. So I think the story really is the people who are protesting it, the people who are saying this isn't okay. Yeah, um, and yeah. you know, so with going on to that, you're you're saying like y you want to be respectful, right? Yeah. And I have th plenty of quotes of the uh, two these two individuals who had sparked this quote unquote protest, which I still wouldn't it's some sort of protest, right? Yeah, demonstration. Demonstration. Yeah. That's a better word. Uh, it, the younger individual was claiming that he was perfect. And outside of that, he was claiming that sometimes, and this is a quote from him, God feel or let me, let, this is, I'm paraphrasing, but he said in some sort of quote that it is necessary to disrespectfully preach the word of God. So it can be good to uh, preach hatefully sometimes. Yeah, I mean, in that clip that y'all just heard, I mean, that's, I don't agree with that. I will say that I believe in God. Uh, I was raised as a Christian. I And at one point in my life, I rejected all that and felt that I was an atheist. And then I, I have come back to that. And, you know, that's my own personal beliefs. And I, I just have to say that I really thoroughly disagree with what he's saying, that you should disrespectfully preach the word of God. Um, you know, I think God, to me, is a comfort. And I think that that's the perspective a lot of people have. So if you are shouting at people and telling them that, you know, you're horrible just because of the way you feel or are or were born, you know, they're not going to want to join or be a part of any group that's for that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Why? Yeah. That, at that point, it just gives plenty more reason not to accept that or join that. Yeah, I think I think that's with a lot of situations is people don't want to have people be angry at them. They don't want to have people be mad at them. That's not an effective way to change somebody. It's really just about being a role model. I think these guys would have a much better shot of 
changing people if they just went out and uh, they just preached normally and they preached love. And I think it's so insane that this guy said that he was perfect too, because I mean, no, nobody is entirely perfect. And even if he said he was maybe perfect in God's eyes, I don't understand why none of these other people that are listed on their signs can be perfect in the eyes of God and can be forgiven for their sins. Uh, but that, that's another discussion for another day. Um, so that really brings me to the thought of what do you think these guys' motivations are to be on campus? Do you think that these guys are being for real about their beliefs? Because I know, I know you heard somebody on the scene say that uh, maybe these guys are doing it for monetary gain. Maybe they are trying to get somebody to hit them or assault them and then so they can sue them. So what do you think? Yeah, so I would agree with that. I would agree with the, what those students were saying. Um, so yeah, a lot of students did say that they felt that these individuals were here just to, you know, spark controversy, just to just to get clicks, views, yeah, whatever, get to get a crowd of people around them, and it worked, and it worked several times. Uh, and I'll tell you what didn't bring the same uh, foot traffic was individuals that same day passing out New Testaments. Yeah. Okay. So there were individuals all over campus on corners of every block with a, bo- a cardboard box of New Testaments just passing them out. And, you know, whatever, they're, it doesn't matter at that point what they're doing because they're ex- they're silent and they're just saying, do you want this? And if you say no, then they're not going to say anything else or even try to talk to you, And yeah. th- which in my experience, they didn't. And if you're going to do something like that, I think that's what you should be doing. Um, but getting back to the student perspective on this issue, you know, many students agreed that they were there just to get uh, controversy started. It's just really annoying and very disruptive to the community around here. Stop coming here and trying to educate us when we clearly don't want you here. I'm tired of them. I've been here for four years. It's my senior year. And every year they're here. And they're usually coming in the spring, so they're early this year. But I'm just like, go somewhere else. So, you know, this, this student felt that they hate gay people okay yeah and that's and i could agree with that okay uh i i don't know if i would use the word hate but they definitely uh don't align with the perspective of people in the lgbtqia plus community um i think a large um driving point as to what they wanted to say was uh, anti-homosexual statements, um, any any statement, anything that uh, like a traditional uh, Christian. Yeah, because that's a super controversial topic. Is is that in people when they're gay, uh, that's that's who they are, and I mean you can be. All these other things, you can be a porn watcher, a weed smoker, um, a feminist, but that's not necessarily literally who you are as a person. You know, it's it's comparable to saying that you hate one race or you hate males or females. So I feel like they definitely preyed on that to be able to get to incite reactions from other people and to try and get them to to fight them if that was their motivation was to fight them get assaulted and try and sue them yeah and like uk uh, or any college campus at that is going to be more liberal um so you're going to have many more people who disalign with this traditional christian value um so they also go to other colleges and campuses and do the same thing um but you don't see them out in like public in in a city that maybe people would agree with what they're they're not doing this to have people come up and say oh yeah I get, you know I agree good job man and yeah. they they want people to approach them with conflict and and you know I even had a moment with the main um protester uh or demonstrator where I was interviewing him and it was a formal interview at first I talked to him for like 2 minutes and then just somewhere in that interview he just took his phone and pushed my mic out of his face or out of his way it wasn't even it was probably a foot or farther away from him and he 
pushed my mic with his phone and then put his phone about three inches yeah. into my face. Yeah. And was like personal space, just like. Well, the Bible tells us to judge ourselves that we would not be judged. You don't have to stick that that close to me, okay? I won't stick. Don't touch my phone. All right, see? Stop. 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 I'm not touching you. Get your phone. Get your thing out of my face. I told you already. Okay. Stop it. Don't. All right. So you can you can really see in the video that this guy. I mean, you're not having his mic super close to him. You know, it's in it's in a normal space. So. Yeah, and then. I just thought it was really funny how he was like, let's get the supposed news guy out of here. And then I had students behind me were like, he is a news guy. Like, yeah, we, we and know you, this, you, you know. very literally have our logo on the microphone now. Right. Like, and we are branded. Yeah, and yeah. then he was like, he went as far as to be like, hey, officer, hey, officer, you know, before that, which is great, because you know what I did right after that? I, I interviewed the officer. Yeah. And it, it was very, the officer was like, you did this, you know, he's explaining to me, like, this is what they do. Like, it's... You can't, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to like touch the guy, but he was, he's sitting there like touching me, like moving my hands around and like, I'm not going to make a stir about it because that's not who I am. That's not what I'm there for, but that's what he's there for. And he, yeah. his mission was successful. He did that. Yeah. And that's why I'm definitely not going to choose to put that in the TikTok because yeah. that's going to make his day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, I mean, that won't, that won't be a social clip either. That would just, that would just be a sound for the podcast for, yeah for our yeah. listeners. Um, but I mean, I saw, I kind of saw that same exact situation that you're telling me about happen when I was walking past where I saw, um, a woman that kind of just was standing in his face and like very, very close. There was no personal space between the two. And I think that, uh, I didn't see, I didn't see them touch each other, but I think that's what he was wanting. He was wanting her to hit him or do, or push him in, in some type of way. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure if I recorded this. Uh, I think I might have, but there was a moment where he was claiming that somebody had physically harassed him, and yeah. then right after that, uh, I, an individual pointed out that he had physically harassed me, um, which you know I maybe wouldn't go as far as to say that, but somebody said that, and then right after that, a girl made a comment that you know she felt you know sexually harassed by comments that he was making, like verbal yeah. harassment um, and and sexual innuendos, uh, and like. Yeah, that's bad, but that's that's what he wants again. Like yeah. he, he just wants people to be riled up. Uh I don't I really it really is a jarring thought because I don't understand why people would like want to do that. Yeah. And like what what does he do as a job? Like yeah. <laughs> like he's sitting yeah. here all day doing um, this. When we're talking about him, by the way, we're talking about the older the older protester. Um there was a younger one as well who I think we mentioned earlier. Um, who, that's the one who referred to himself as perfect, right? Yeah. He referred yeah. to himself and the older gentleman, well, older man as perfect. I'm not yeah. going to go on the gentleman. <laughs> uh, he's not a gentleman. Um, yeah. Uh, which I thought was pretty gnarly. Um, af even after he did that, he's like, yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah. And I've never in my life heard somebody say, yeah, I'm perfect. Yeah. That sounds, um, pretty narcissistic. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think I think that's really about it. I think we covered everything that we needed to cover. Is there anything else from the story that you want to tell me about? I wouldn't say so. Um, I I would maybe include that the general consensus of students. I I did mention this earlier that it was against them, but I got a, a very strong quote from this senior who felt that you know she had seen them there every single day, uh, or every single year, uh, and she's just sick of it. She she doesn't understand why they're here, just like me and you. Yeah. So I mean, I, that kind of that kind of asks the question: Why does UK allow these guys on campus? I'm kind of wondering, like, how there's um a sign up sheet. I have a theory. What? Uh, well, the Moon Man TikTok has how many views? And yeah. It's on UK's campus, right? Yeah. So it's gonna maybe drive people to come here more, um, just because it, there there is controversial issues. I mean, you know, hmm. <laughs> Steven Crowder is one of those guys, and like. A lot of people take time out of their day to find out where he is and to go to these universities and debate with him. Yeah. So maybe these guys are doing that so that they have people come around the area to to UK to to see this. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, UK is not going to not allow this because it is free speech. Uh, with some regard, like I might add that something some things he said was could be considered hate speech. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part. Um, it's free speech and UK did have police there, uh, on standby. So 
everything uh, potentially was very safe. Yeah. Um. Well, I think that's about it. I, I'm. I am wondering if they have a sign up sheet for that as well. If they, they have a sign up sheet, yeah, because they're usually in the same spot. But yeah. <laughs> um. That's a, that's about it for the podcast. Uh, I just want to thank all of our listeners for uh, listening to the podcast and supporting Student News as well. We really appreciate it. Um, and I hope that you all have a great day. Yeah. Thank you.